How close are AI agents to performing economically valuable real-world tasks? That's the question asked in The Agent Company, benchmarking LLM agents on consequential real-world tasks, a recent paper by Xu et al. The answer to this question has important implications for both industry looking to adopt AI into their workflows and for economic policy to understand the effects that adoption of AI may have on the labor market. This work introduces the agent company, a benchmark for evaluating AI agents that interact with the world in similar ways to those of a digital worker by browsing the web, writing code, running programs, and communicating with other co-workers. In this video, I'll discuss the benchmark, online resources, and just how close the results suggest that we are to automating various tasks. Now, the authors point out that we are seeing AI-based assistance or automation become commonplace in tasks that were unthinkable only a few years ago. In fact, the pace of progress is so fast that some have gone so far as to claim that the majority of human labor may be automatable within the next couple of years. On the other hand, we have significant skepticism about the ability of LLMs to plan, and benchmarks like the ARC AGI benchmark, which as of December 2024, remains unbeaten and showed that Frontier AI systems still seem to lag behind humans on simple tasks. Although there was something of an update here in late December with Francois Cholet's post on the OpenAI 03 breakthrough high score on Arc AGI Pub, describing the result as a surprising and important step function increase in AI capabilities, showing novel task adaptation ability never seen before in the GPT family models, and noting in a particularly striking way that all intuition about AI capabilities will need to get updated for O3. Jumping back, we note that even with this update, there is still clearly a disconnect, a difference of perspectives. The authors argue that it is, in part, due to a lack of objective benchmarks that not only demonstrate the power of existing LLM-based agents to accelerate a wide variety of repetitive tasks encountered in everyday workplaces, but also provide appropriate caveats about the tasks that agents cannot do. To tackle this, the authors propose the agent company benchmark. There's a reproducible and self-hosted environment, shown here, containing simulated colleagues and an evaluation setup in which an agent can take actions in the environment and receive back observations. The benchmark features tasks like the admin task of arrange a meeting room or the HR task of resume screening, even the finance task of reimburse travel bills. I suspect this will be popular. Okay, let's discuss the benchmark desiderata that the agent company aspires to fulfill. First, Coverage of multiple work-related tasks. In order to make any valid statements about the potential of AI to accelerate or automate various types of real-world work, we should have tasks that are motivated by real-world work across multiple job categories. Second, requirement for interaction. If agents are to integrate into real-world workplaces, they will need to communicate with the other human members of the workspace. Third, long horizon tasks with checkpoints. In real world settings, many tasks require taking many different steps to achieve a higher level goal. Fourth, versatile environment interface. In order to handle a diversity of tasks in real world settings, we minimally should be able to interact with the tools that real world workers use, including web interfaces, programs, command line terminals, and communication tools. Fifth, and finally, in order to allow for careful comparisons between different methods that remain constant over time, the benchmark should be self-hosted and reproducible. The benchmark is set in an imaginary software engineering startup called The Agent Company. There's some nice background details about the company, like its technology stack. I see we have some Rust fans and its main products and services, which include an inference platform based on the legendary Llama CPP. The benchmark environment contains a local workspace created as a sandboxed Docker environment and intranet that mimics the company's internal websites that host code, documents, project management software, and communication software. The authors use open source, self-hostable software for their environment, which contains GitLab, own cloud to save and share files, Plane, which is an open source alternative to task management software like Jira, and Rocket Chat, 
which is an alternative to Slack. All the websites hosted are reproducible and resettable with mock data inspired by that from a software engineering company. To set this up, the data inside these company internal websites are populated with real-world software project data, as well as data manually curated by co-authors who have some experience in the relevant corporate roles. The benchmark also has simulated colleague communication using simulated human characters with LLMs such as Sarah Johnson, who serves as the CTO, oversees technical strategy planning and R&D team leadership with access to all technical channels. Each task in the benchmark consists of first, a task intent, an English description, simulating how a user would instruct an LLM-based agent to perform a real-world task. The goal is for these tasks to be clear enough so that a human worker would be able to complete the task without asking for further instructions directly from the user, although they may need to ask questions of their other co-workers. The second component of a task is its checkpoints. These represent intermediate milestones, are written in English, and specify an action completion, verifying whether required actions, such as using tools, navigating to URLs, or collecting data, were carried out successfully. Data accuracy, evaluating the correctness and completeness of the output, such as extracted data or formatted documents, and possibly also collaboration, assessing interactions with simulated colleagues or sharing of output, such as posting messages or asking for additional information to complete the task. Finally, a task contains evaluators, each of which is a program that checks the completion of the checkpoint. Usually, evaluators are deterministic and written as simple Python functions. Now, turning to evaluation metrics, to measure progress, the authors compute both a full completion score, which checks if all checkpoints are successfully passed, and a partial completion score, which assigns partial credit based on the checkpoints. They also track the number of steps, that is, the total number of LLM calls made during the task execution, and the cost per instance, which is the monetary cost of querying the underlying LLM through its API to complete a task. Here is an example of an agent executing a task. It is managing a sprint for the Rising Wave project. Exciting. First, it has to access and update sprint issues, which it does successfully. Notify issue assignees via Rocket Chat. Again, success. Clone a repo from GitLab and run code coverage tests. Here it gets half the checkpoint score. Then it must upload the report and share with the appropriate manager. No points here. And finally, incorporate feedback from manager. Again, no points here. So overall, its checkpoint score was 4 out of 8. Now we come to a particularly interesting part, task creation. Obtaining realistic tasks for the benchmark poses challenges. The goal here is to attempt to cover a wide variety of tasks motivated by real-world work. The authors start by referencing the 29.1 release of the ONET database, a database of jobs performed by workers in the US created by the US Department of Labor. Among other things, it contains task statements for various roles, like the fact that chief executives deliver speeches, write articles or present information at meetings or conventions to promote services, exchange ideas or accomplish objectives. Based on statistics from ONET, they identified job categories that have a large number of people performing this job. Then they used median salary information for each of these job categories from the US Department of Labor Statistics and multiplied the number of employees in that category to estimate the aggregate value of performing this job. From this, they identified a number of jobs that have both a high population and high average salary. To avoid categories that require extensive physical labor, such as registered nurses, they eventually settled on the setting of a software company. Within this setting, they came up with tasks through a combination of referencing the ONET task list, introspection based on paper co-authors who had experience in each task category, and brainstorming lists with language models. Now we come to the fun part, manual task curation. All tasks were created by co-authors of the paper. Overall, it took 20 computer science students, software engineers, and project managers over two months, consuming approximately 3,000 person hours in total. Respect. Some of the more complex tasks take more than 10 hours each to design, implement, test, and verify. For quality control, 
They encourage including tests for the implemented evaluator program, and each contribution is code reviewed by a panel of lead authors before merging into the benchmark. Then, after creating all tasks, a final round of manual human double check of required environment data, evaluator behavior, and checkpoint scoring for every task is performed to ensure quality. Now we come to the baseline agent. For this, the authors use the open hands agent, specifically the code act agent with browsing. Here, the agent can take actions like interact with the browser through Playwright Chromium, use IPython, or use a bash shell onto the experimental results. For now, Claude 3.5 Sonnet performs best, achieving success on 24% of tasks, at an average of around 30 steps, and a cost of $6.34 per task. Gemini 2.0 Flash is second, with a success rate of 11.4%, taking an average of around 40 steps, but at a much cheaper average cost of 79 cents per task. For now, the open weights models are not hugely competitive on price performance, though Llama 3.370B is getting closer, and perhaps we'll see an update shortly with DeepSeek V3. Here we see a breakdown of success rate across platforms for Claude 3.5 Sonnet and Llama 3.1 405B. We see that Claude is okay on GitLab and Plane, but struggles a little more with Rocket Chat and own cloud. Looking at success rate across task categories, Claude is okay at software development engineering and being a PM or working in HR. The admin performance is zero. One reason for this could be that unlike software engineering, administrative and financial tasks are usually private data within companies, not readily available for training LLMs. The authors study some common agent failures. These include lack of common sense, like not working out that workspace slash answer.docs is a Microsoft Word file, lack of social skills, incompetence in browsing. One issue here is the numerous distractions on a web page. For example, on many tasks that involve own cloud, the closable pop-up that sometimes shows up and asks the user to download the mobile phone apps for a better experience has become an obstacle. Finally, there is deceiving oneself. For example, during the execution of one task, the agent cannot find the right person to ask questions on Rocket Chat. As a result, it then decides to create a shortcut solution by renaming another user to the name of the intended user. Sneaky. Okay, some extra resources. You can find the experiments on GitHub, and there's also a nice project page where you can see demos of agents doing tasks. Okay, that's it. We've reached the end. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have a wonderful day.